we've just been introduced to a new class of chemical reaction called oxidation reduction or redox and we've used the reaction shown in front of us to get the idea that it is a reaction where electrons are transferred and I've talked about the fact that there is an oxidation reaction occurring and a reduction reaction occurring at the same time so one of the species or one of the chemicals is called an oxidant while the other one is called a reductant sorry starting one is called a reductant while one is called an oxidant what we're going to look at now is just look at oxidation and reduction in a little bit more depth to make sure we've got these two concepts well sorted in our head so we're going to continue with the same um, example so we can explore that more right so what we see here is that I'm saying that oxidation is a loss of electrons we can see that in the zinc there it's losing two electrons because they are in the product side or they're being given away um, but I'm going to write this one out again just so that I can show you the next thing about how we know it's redox as well so the zinc being turned into the zinc 2 plus plus two electrons so one of the things you'll often hear people say as a way to remember it is that it's loss of electrons is oxidation and down here gain of electrons is reduction so Leo goes here or conversely oxidation is loss we were talking about electrons reduction is gain so oil there's a couple of easy ways to remember this what I'm going to quickly show you here is, as well as the half equation, which is this equation with electrons in it, I can also use a thing called oxidation number. And there'll be a video on how to work out oxidation number being done later. But zinc as an element has got an oxidation number of zero, and zinc as a two plus ion has an oxidation number of plus two. You can see this is being increased. So this is another thing we can use to show that this is oxidation. Zinc is also something that we call a strong reductant. It's, it's easily oxidized. So in the reaction above, we see that it was a reductant, as written in red there. So it must be a stronger reductant than copper is, because that reaction was what we call spontaneous. It actually happened. So in this case here, zinc is going to be a reductant because it's being oxidized. Conversely, and simultaneously you've got the copper ions gaining two electrons the two that actually have been given up by the zinc to become copper metal we knew that because of what we observed so what is this this is the reduction reaction and again we can see electrons being gained because they're on the left hand side of the equation or the half equation just like with numbering above, we can use oxidation number. The copper as a 2 plus ion has got an oxidation number of plus 2. And copper as an element has an oxidation number of 0. So this is being reduced. What you'll notice is the oxidation number in the first reaction is going up by the same number of electrons that are being lost. At the same time, in the copper one, the oxidation number is being reduced by the same amount of electrons as are being gained. This isn't a coincidence, this is something you will actually see commonly throughout um, all the half equations that you have to write. Again, in this one here, stronger oxidants are more easily reduced. So this means that the copper 2 plus is a stronger oxidant than the Zn2 plus. So some of these definitions are ones that you need to get oxidant reductant or oxidizing agent and reducing agent and this idea of oxidation numbers and electron transfer they're all used to justify what's happening so we know that this is not an acid base reaction or precipitation reaction for example because we've got a change in oxidation number and we've got the half equations that show electrons being transferred to tell us that it is oxidation reduction or redox instead.